Hello everyone and welcome to PC Retro Tech. In this week's video I'm going to be programming a new demo effect called a rotor zoom. Uh, so what is a rotor zoom? Well we've had one on the channel before. Uh, I showed some demos that were written for a demo competition many years ago for the 8086 and one of them 8086 feet under uh, has a rotor zoom in it. So let me just show you that now. Uh, so this is a fairly standard rotor zoom. So the first thing that it does is to do some pre-computation. Uh, it's computing some sines and cosines and computing a map uh, for the uh, image that's going to be rotated and zoomed on the screen. And then after a few seconds, uh, it will start to rotate and zoom it. Now you'll notice that there's a lot of flicker and uh, there's also a lot of snow. And that's because this particular rotor zoom is done in text mode and they haven't done anything to get rid of the snow or at least uh, if it worked on their machine, uh, it doesn't work on my standard IBM PC. Now they get uh, 9 frames a second here, so that's going to be our aim. Uh, but we're going to do this a little bit differently. I'm going to do it using uh, CGA graphics mode instead of uh, text mode. And that'll mean that we can get rid of the flicker and the snow uh, but of course uh, it's going to mean that we're going to have fewer colors just four to play with and uh, we may have a slower frame rate because we'll be using graphics mode instead of text mode. In order to write a rotor zoom I'm first of all going to need an image to rotate and zoom and for that I'm going to use a program called Deluxe Paint 2 Enhanced uh, now this is actually very hard to get hold of. Deluxe Paint 2 is quite easy, but the reason you want the enhanced version is that as well as supporting CGA mode, it also supports PCX format, which is a very, very simple graphics format uh, that you can actually write code to load from disk. And so uh, this is the way the program comes up, and you can see that it has uh, a very large menu of options on the right hand side, including even an undo option and all of the sorts of things you'd expect to find in a program like this. Uh, so you can draw lines, uh, you can even draw splines, which is amazing. Uh, polygons, circles and ellipses, uh, you, there's a, fill, a flood fill, uh, spray can, text. Uh, there's also a magnifying glass and you can zoom in images and edit them pixel by pixel. Uh, so it's a really very sophisticated program uh, for the era. There are a couple of bugs in it, unfortunately. I did find that the copy and paste function uh, doesn't seem to work correctly uh, in certain modes. There are lots of different modes that the program can be put into uh, by right-clicking the mouse button on various uh, options in the menu. Uh, so anyway, this is the program that I'm going to use. Uh, so let me show you the image that I made with this program. This is what I came up with, and I do apologize for the flicker. A considerable amount of fiddling has not been able to get rid of that. Uh, but basically, it's an 8088 CPU. Uh, there's some little uh, Space Invader tanks down the bottom, uh, PC Retro Tech, and some uh, blue lines, which are symmetric about the image. Now, the thing that we have to do with the image here is make sure that all of the lines are fairly thick. Uh, because as we zoom in and out, uh, and you'll see this later in the demo, uh, that uh, some of the thinner lines will just sort of vanish, uh, or bits of them will vanish as it's rotating, uh, because the rotor zoom will pick pixels either side of the line, and so you'll just get black. Uh, so we have to make the lines relatively thick and chunky. Uh, even so, I probably put a little bit too much information in my graphic here, uh, but this will do. Uh, let's see what we can do. The first thing I'm going to do is turn my PCX file into a .dat file. And uh, this will just have the pixel information exactly as it would be displayed on the screen. Uh, so PCX is a format that uses a kind of run length encoding. And so it's going to decrypt that and it's just going to turn it into uh, just straight pixel data. So I want CGA and I'm going to take ic.pcx, which is my uh, picture, and it'll display it just to make sure that I've got the right one, and then it's going to tell me that it's written 4096 bytes, uh, it's actually 4098, and it's a 128 by 128 sprite, 
and I've picked that particular size for a reason and that's because if I want to uh, have the sprite repeat I need to do arithmetic mod 128 because when I get to 128 I need to wrap it back around to zero again and uh, for that uh, I need really efficient arithmetic and of course arithmetic mod 128 is quite fast uh, so it'll then uh, write it to a DAT file and then read it back in just to make sure that it really is the right thing and it looks okay uh, so now we have our IC.DAT I'll just write a C program for reading in the DAT file and it's going to be very straightforward there's a little function here for setting the video mode and uh, here's the main function load dat and it takes a file name and it loads it into a buffer so this is just using the uh, standard C F read function and it's 4096 bytes that I want to read in and I read it into a buffer called buff and then I close the file uh, so the main program is very simple it's just going to set the video mode to CGA uh, it's going to allocate space for the buffer and here's the call to our load dat program and then once I press a key it's going to go back to uh, the ordinary text mode and exit the program so it's very straightforward and uh, of course it's not going to do anything we've not asked it to display anything on the screen yet uh, but this will just ensure that we can actually read the dat file in this is the second version of the program and I've made a few changes here. So the first one is that I've made the buffer that I'm reading the DAT file into much larger. It's now 16384 bytes. Uh, so in other words, 16K instead of 4K. And I'm loading the DAT file into the last 4K of that buffer. And what I'm going to do then is expand that DAT file into uh, the entire buffer. Uh, so I'm going to make it four times bigger and the reason I want to do that is currently uh, the pixel information is stored with each pixel in two bits but I want each pixel in a byte and so that'll make it four times larger and the reason I want to do that is because uh, I want to uh, expand each pixel so that it fills an entire byte of screen memory so then I can just write a byte at a time which will be much more efficient and it will fill up the screen much quicker uh, than if I had to calculate and fiddle around with all of the bits uh, to move the pixels about. Uh, so this is sort of something that was automatic for the text mode rotor zoom that we saw at the beginning because text characters have uh, a fixed width uh, they're not uh, just you know individual pixels being modified so we're kind of emulating that in a way uh, so what I plan to do is to have uh, only the even lines on the screen display because we really don't have enough time to fill the entire screen and uh, each byte within those lines is going to be filled all at once so I'm not going to uh, bother making the pixel colors different in each of the bytes uh, by fiddling around with the bits I'm just going to make it the same color all the way across the byte or maybe I'll just pick the, uh, the middle two pixels in each byte and make them the same color and the other two black. I think that's probably what I'll do. Uh, that's actually what I've done here. So um, this is the expand dat function and you can see it starts at, at the last 4096 bytes uh, of the buffer and it extracts uh, a byte at a time and then it does some uh, fiddling to get uh, a pair of bits and expand that out to a byte. Uh, so it writes from uh, the original 4096 byte buffer into the whole buffer, uh, expanding everything out as it goes. Now that we've done our pre-computation, it's time to display the image and start rotating it on the screen. And so that's what this loop here does. It's going to loop a thousand times and each time it's going to update an angle theta by a very small amount and redraw the image. Now, uh, the way this works is I'm going to take a vector and I'm going to rotate it by the angle theta. I certainly don't want to rotate every single point by theta, otherwise I'm just going to have way too much computation to do. So I just take a single vector and I use that vector to step through the image. So, for example, if the vector had uh, sides... Uh, 3.5 in the x direction and 1.7 in the y direction 
it would step by 3.5 pixels at a time through the image in the X direction and 1.7 pixels at a time in the Y direction. Now obviously I have to keep track of some floating point information to do that and floating point is very very expensive so I compute uh, an integer by scaling this floating point information by a factor of 256. So XD and YD here are actually integers uh, but they're basically fractions that have been scaled by 256 and then rounded to an integer. So this is a standard trick to be able to use integer uh, arithmetic instead of floating point arithmetic. So what it means is that every 256 in the X direction actually corresponds to just stepping by one pixel. And so this is set up so that it's going to start by stepping 1.5 pixels uh, times cos of theta in the x direction and 1.5 pixels by sine of theta in the y direction and I pass those values into this fill function and that's going to go through the image and it's going to pick out uh, the pixels that we want to display and put them into our 80 by 50 array and here at the top here is the function that's going to draw the image on the screen every iteration so it'll go through that 80 by 50 character array, if you like, uh, each of which is just a single byte of color information, and it'll repeat it twice on the even lines, and uh, that'll be our character. Uh, so let's see what this actually looks like when we run it. It'll be very slow, of course, because it's in C, but don't worry, we're going to speed it up. So I've called the program RZ Demo, and when I run it, it uh, does all of those steps that we talked about, so it loads the texture from the disk, it expands it out into a much larger texture uh, and then it fills the initial buffer ready to draw the first image on the screen. Uh, so when I press a key it will start rotating and zooming. Now as you can see uh, it's very slow, it's about uh, 4 or 5 frames a second and that's actually only because I'm using uh, my XT at 8 megahertz here. Uh, you can also see uh, that as I mentioned some of the pixels sort of come into and out of uh, you know, visibility. I've also got quite a large angle that I'm stepping about uh, here. That's because it would just look too slow if I used a smaller angle. Uh, so this is not particularly satisfactory. So there's a few improvements that we need to make uh, in order for this to look good. So the first, obviously, is we need to make it faster. And the only way that we're going to be able to do that is to use assembly language and of course the other thing that we want to do is to zoom in and out. At the moment it's just rotating about the origin and I need to pick uh, a set of zoom factors uh, that make the image look uh, reasonable. Uh, at the moment for example you can't read the 8088 on the CPU very well and uh, even the PC RetroTech is not particularly readable at the moment. Uh, so let's have a go at some assembly language and see if we can get this to speed up. The assembly language is pretty straightforward and the first function actually draws the pixels on the screen uh, from our 80 by 50 buffer and uh, the way it works is that it draws one set of characters across the screen at a time. Uh, so to do that it's going to have to draw two lines because it's only going to be doing the even lines and of course there's 50 characters down the screen uh, so it's going to have to loop 50 times. Now each uh, screen line is 80 bytes wide and so uh, that's 40 words and so I'm just going to be basically copying 40 words from our uh, buffer into screen memory and then for the second line uh, for, the, for those characters uh, I do exactly the same thing except that I reset uh, the buffer before I do it uh, so that I'm drawing the same information twice and that's all there is to it. Uh, it's a pretty straightforward function. Uh, the other function is this fill RZ buffer, and this is a much more complicated function, which I'm not going to go through the details of. Uh, but this is the one that strides through our image, uh, you know, XD at a time in the X direction and YD at a time in the Y direction, and picks out the pixels uh, that we want to display, uh, and it puts them into our 80 by 50 buffer. 
Uh, now, I'm only going to take a look at the inner loop here, which is kind of interesting. So you can see that the inner loop uh, is just a few lines long, and uh, it has three sections. So the first section is the one that does all that arithmetic mod 128 that I talked about. And it's really amazing that that can all fit into five assembly language instructions. It's certainly a lot less than what the C program would have managed. And here's the bit that does the actual striding. Uh, so it's incrementing by x, d in the x direction every time and y, d in the y direction. So just basically striding through the image uh, to work out which pixels to pick and put into our 80 by 50 buffer. And this is the code in the middle for actually copying that information out of the image into our 80 by 50 buffer. So that's really all there is to it. The rest of it is just some loops and some setup uh, to make this work. So let's see how this actually runs. This is what it looks like now. And uh, one of the other changes that I've made is I'm at now pre-computing all the sines and cosines because they were taking roughly 14 seconds just for a thousand of those. Uh, so that uh, happens now as a pre-computation phase, uh, similar to the way it was done in the original demo. And uh, this is what the rotation looks like. So obviously it's way faster now. It's 14 frames per second. Uh, and uh, that's uh, a big improvement over what we had. Uh, unfortunately on the original IBM PC it's only about seven and a half frames per second uh, which is a little on the slow side compared to the original demo but bear in mind that we have no snow and uh, we're actually doing this in genuine graphics mode. Uh, so I consider this to be a success. Uh, I did make a few other changes here. Uh, you can see that it's now zooming in and out as well as rotating, and all that was required there was just to change the scale factor, that 384.0 that we had, and it now goes up to 128, back down to zero, and so on. Uh, so I could improve this a little. I could use uh, bigger characters if I wanted this to speed up a lot, uh, or I could even just draw fewer pixels on the screen, maybe use every third line or something like that. Uh, but this requires some extra arithmetic and as you can imagine it's already taken quite a few days to get to this point. Uh, but hopefully you like this. Uh, that's all I've got time for this week unfortunately. Uh, so if you like this sort of content don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you in a later video. Bye.